because we've had the different prosecutorial agencies tell us they can't really complete their investigation because they haven't yet figured out what the cause of death is. They say they want to hear from the coroner on an autopsy. They say they're not sure what it is that killed Kelly Thomas. I think the evidence is pretty clear, and I'm going to go through the medical records with you to show you exactly how it is that Kelly Thomas was killed, was murdered by these fourth and police officers. Let me just as a way of background, Kelly Thomas trusted the police. Kelly Thomas's dad was a police officer. Kelly Thomas's grandfather was a police officer. Kelly Thomas's great grandfather was a police officer. His uncle was a police officer. So he had no reason to fear or no reason to in any way suspect that police officers would beat him to death as they did on July the 5th this year. Now, for all intents and purposes, after they beat him brutally, these rather large police officers, six of them, were transported to the hospital to St. Jude's. By the time he got to St. Jude's, he was already brain dead. And so for the next five days as he was transported to UCI, they kept him alive, and they declared him brain dead on the 10th of July. And at that point, under the state of California rules, once you're declared brain dead by the medical personnel, they do not need to sustain life any longer because there's no chance of recovery. And so they stopped care, and he expired. Now, Kelly Thomas died because of one head trauma. That blunt head trauma caused multiple fractures of bones in and around his face. Those bones, as they broke, right above the nose, the nose, the zygomatic process, or the bone that goes from the cheek bone to the skull. But the bone inside the nose, the ethmoid plate, was also broken. Now, these just don't break easily. They take a tremendous amount of pounding. Witnesses have described that's one of the officers grabbed a taser, an X-26 taser, one that we have here, <coughs> and held it yeah. sort of like a pistol, and pistol with him repeatedly by pounding him on his head. And as he did that, as that officer did that, he caused serious injury and eventual brain death. Now, the broken bones in around his face caused a tremendous amount of bleeding inside his mouth, inside his nasal cavities. All that blood went down into his lungs. And the medical evidence will show that all that blood is what he ended up choking on, his own blood. He had respiratory distress so that he could not breathe any longer. He is heard not only calling out for his dad, where he yells out, dad, 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 thinking, you know, Ron would be there, because Ron is always there for him. But Ron couldn't be there. He wishes he could. But he also yelled out, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. These officers did not stop. They kept beating him, and they kept tasing him. They tased him twice with two separate guns. By that, I mean they used two separate X-26 tasers, and they shot him with these barbs, two to his left chest and two to his flank, to his back. And then they continued to pull the trigger. Each time that trigger is pulled, 50,000 volts, three to five amps of electricity goes and completely paralyzes him. Kelly Thomas was mentally handicapped. He was no threat to anyone. There's not a single victim that's come forward to say, that night, Kelly Thomas was a threat to me. They did not need to beat him to death. There was no reason for it. Two officers would have, should have had no trouble bringing him down, handcuffing him, and taking him the way that they needed to. They really didn't need to do that either. Some people suggest that there may be the officer beating with a flashlight, and that may be. But there could be a confusion because this taser, when you turn it on, has a flashlight device on it, and it's got a low uh, infrared beam also. And so when seeing someone hit some, you know, an officer hit someone like this, they might mistake this for a flashlight. But it's not. Now, let me just tell you that there was a surveillance camera film from which we have not seen. There were multiple cell phones that did capture portions of what happened. These cameras are now the eyes 
you know, one thing that we've learned now is that we can see when police officers do wrong, we can see you with these cell phones, with these surveillance cameras, and you'll be caught and you'll be prosecuted. So we we're asking the district attorney of Orange County and the attorney general and the federal prosecutors to look at this case closely and indict these officers, charge them with criminal offenses. Now let me go through some of the medical records so you see what the background is that I'm relying on in making the statements I have. No, if you could just bring this first one over. What I have here, first of all, is titled Brain Death Declaration Form. This is filled out at the University of California, Irvine. And this is after days of working on Kelly and seeing that there's absolutely no way he's coming back. The medical personnel have said mechanism consistent with brain death, they say yes. Other causes of death excluded, for example, and they give examples, they go, yes, they were excluded. Then under neurological examination, they say response to verbal stimuli absent, they say yes. Pupils, good. Fixed, I'm sorry. Dilated. Fixed and dilated, yes. Corneal reflex <coughs> absent, yes. So they go down and they outline all the reasons why they determined that he is brain dead, and the answers are all yes, and then they date it, they've signed it, and this is just within hours of finally stopping all care to Kelly. Now we'll just go to the next page, which now I think conclusively tells us exactly why Kelly Thomas died. So we don't need any more delay. We don't need the DA's office or any other prosecutorial agency to tell us we have to wait to find out what the cause of death is because we don't know why Kelly died. It's as obvious as the nose is on our faces. We know exactly why he died. He died because of an assault. And as I go through this, you'll see there's a report of death, and it's the death was caused by immediate cause, brain death. And that's on July the 10th, 11th. Head trauma due to head trauma on 7 5 11. Due to <coughs> assault. That's the one word description. Are you sure it says assault? A S S U L T. It may be misspelled. It looks like assault. It's like assault. Well, maybe you could interpret it that way. But I read it as assault, and I'll show you more documentation that uses the word and spells it correctly. Anyway, this was signed, and this is a medical doctor, Chris Washington, signed on that same day when they, at that point, decided to withdraw all care. So, brain death, head trauma. What could have caused that? He certainly didn't have a bad goal. He wasn't suffering from any other illness. He had, some people ask, well, what kind of drugs did he have? Or was he drunk? He was homeless, maybe he was out in the streets. And the answer is, they did a complete study. He had no alcohol in the system. He had no drugs in his system. He was as sober as all of us. And yet, they beat him to death. Six Fulton police officers have been on paid leave. Let me repeat what I've said previously. I don't believe all six are guilty of similar crimes. I do believe those that watched should have stepped in and should have taken action to stop the others from beating Kelly mercilessly. Kelly was helpless, and yet they continued to beat him. Those should have stepped in, but I would forgive them for not stepping in considering the circumstances they were in. But I can't forgive them for not coming forward now and telling us what happened and telling us the truth and break away from these other officers. Break the code of silence. Break that circling of the wagons where you do everything you can to help one another as police officers. Because this is not the situation where you should be helping rogue officers that caused the young man to die from a brutal, severe beating. That should not happen in America. It just should not. Now Ron 
seeing these pictures was obviously very, very upset, as it should be. Seeing parts of the video, uh, it has tortured him tremendously. And I can tell you that we're not going to stop, and Rod's not going to stop his mission, because he is on a mission, and that is to get these officers charged with crimes, because they are criminals. If they did not have badges, they would not be free today. They would be in jail. And all we could do is ask and implore the prosecutorial agencies, do the right thing. Show the public that you're here to protect us, not only from criminals wearing masks, but from some criminals that wear badges. There aren't many of them, but there are a few. They're here to protect us, to serve us and protect us, not beat us to death. And when they beat us to death, they need to be held accountable so that others will get the message that you're going to get caught on video, or witnesses are going to see what it is that you've done, and you'll be brought to justice. So behave. We're paying you a substantial amount of money to protect us. Do that. Don't kill us. So the DA, I mean, uh, the, the coroner office said they have the, uh, the same records that you have, that they have uh, everything that you have, they have. Why can't they come to the same conclusion that you have? Well, the question really is, uh, is it the DA or the... The, the coroner's office uh, motivated to come back with a early and quick decision. I think they're not. I think the coroner's office works hand in hand with the DA regularly, and uh, I can't explain to you why it's taken them so long. Uh, we just got the records uh, about a week ago, and within a week, uh, we were able to interpret exactly what those records say. It's pretty clear uh, exactly why he died is in black and white written and signed by medical personnel that were there to treat Kelly. They weren't looking for excuses. They were telling it like it is, and they told it like it is. Head trauma due to assault, brain death. And the coroner's not? Well, the coroner has not spoken. The coroner thus far tells us that they need to study this further. We don't understand that. I don't imagine any of you understand that. Kelly Thomas deserved better, and Ron Thomas and his family deserved better. They need an answer that makes sense, not delay, 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 with the hopes that someday this story will no longer be front page news, and then they'll slowly fade into the background. We're not going to let that happen. And I think the people of Fullerton are not going to let that happen. The government in Fullerton should not let that happen, because something wrong that occurred on that night, and that wrong needs to be righted. And the first step is for those officers to come forward and point the finger at the officers that committed this crime and begin a prosecution of those officers. Hey, Ron, can we get Ron? Can we get your reaction just generically to the release of the records and what's contained? If you could scoot over just towards the microphone a little bit. Well, Garl, from my uh, my overall being in the right context, it's a great. I'm uh, I'm very emotional, uh, very woke up, but um, I need to continue with this mission, and a big part of that is bringing out the medical records. And it's all about timing. I've told you that since day one, day you understand that, and this is the time to bring this out. This is also the right timing for the DA and the coroner's office to bring it out, to step forward, to let us know what they know. Um, I've known the contents of these records for some time, and uh, it, it's important that everybody understands exactly what happened to them. Instead of just somebody being beaten, you can all see how extreme this is. Your report last night, uh, extraordinary report, uh, showed the actual injuries to him. This isn't just a beating, it's an aggravated murder. Ron, I know the medical records tell us what happened to Kelly, yes. but you know when we talk to the DA, they're going to say it still doesn't lay out which officers did this, whether there was defense moves on his part. We're not hearing beyond the injuries truly what happened then. Let me see if I can address that question as to what the DA might be questioning here. Uh, the bottom line is you've got one man, Kelly Thomas. You've got six officers total 
weight of over 1,500 pounds with all their weapons on them. Any one of them should have been able to bring down Kelly Thomas, even if Kelly Thomas resisted. Two of them should have had no trouble. Three is already a gang. By the time you get to four, five, and six, please. At this point, this had become an attempt to murder. It was not, let's take him down, let's take him away. It was, let's put him away. And that cannot go unpunished. So the DA's office will come up with all sorts of excuses, I imagine. They'll look for some excuse. If uh, Kelly had some medication in him or had some alcohol in him, they would have pointed to that. What did they come out with initially? They said Kelly was combative. Two of our officers, two of our finest, broke bones trying to subdue him. And then they retracted him. All of a sudden, we don't hear anything more about those broken bones. What happened? They just miraculously healed? Why won't these officers come forward? Why are they showing these officers who are individually under investigation the videotape, the surveillance tape, that we have not seen yet? You folks deserve to see it. The Thomas family deserves to see it. Why are the officers who are suspected criminals are allowed to see it? We saw what happened with one of those other officers in the Mann case. The same officer in Hampton who had written a report that did not jive well with the video. Now they get to watch the video of the surveillance and write their report to jive with that. That should not happen. You don't allow criminals to do that. So what, what, was the delay? what was the delay in getting these records to you? I mean, was it There was not a whole lot of delay for us. It was just a matter of getting uh, the proper authorization paperwork uh, to the hospitals, and we got it to them. And uh, there was just a matter of uh, the mechanism of getting our hands on it and reviewed by professionals. So we were sure about what we were going to come out with before we came out with it. And the other question is... Uh, in other words, the, the DA, the industrial agencies, could have had these records on July the 11th, and they probably have had it since. The coroner certainly has had it. Why haven't we heard them tell us what we're just telling you now? And as, as far as the doctor that signed this, is this his sole opinion? Uh, and is he, was he, would he be willing to testify that this is exactly what he discovered, what he found? I, I can tell you that we have not uh, asked that doctor to testify or even communicated with him. We're just looking at the black and white. There's no spin here. You see the cause of death, you see the doctor's signature, and you see blunt head trauma, you see assault, you see brain death. And so it's pretty clear that Ron wanted to comment on that. Can we, can we put the display on the right side? That, the, that. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. <coughs> We're going to have to wrap this up because uh, we do have uh, other matters to attend to, so let's be quick. Mr. Thomas, here. if I may, you were quoted today saying that the DA is now your enemy. Was that a misquote? Do you feel that way? Can you expand on that, please? When did I say that? It was in the headline. I saw that I consider the DA the uh, enemy, unless I'm reading it wrong. Well, it never, never gets it right or so wrong, so I probably did say that. You recall saying that? Um, I've always stated uh, that I am at war. Uh, with uh, the police department and, if necessary, the DA's office, uh, the city of Fullerton, in respect of legal answers. And that's what I mean by at war with. Once they comply, they give all the answers, uh, they cooperate, then uh, I'm sure we'll all back off and extend. But, um, you know, I have to let up the due process take its back. Ron, why is it your conclusion that they intended to kill you? Well, Did they acted with malice. Or is that what you're implying? I think the evidence is pretty clear that when you repeatedly beat a young man who is completely motionless, the witnesses have said that Kelly was not moving, and yet the officers kept pounding on his face and kept yelling out, "Stop resisting! Stop resisting!" You see the young man that walked into the bus who's being recorded spontaneously. He doesn't know that he's being recorded, and he's saying. The officers are pounding on him, and they're saying, stop resisting. The guy isn't moving. And they're still saying, stop resisting. So they can later say, hey, we were saying, stop resisting, because he must have been resisting. They said, so, so the point is that whether it's the taser to the chest, or it's the beating of the face repeatedly over an extended period of time, if those are not intent, I don't know what is, an intent to kill, because it's to the head. No law enforcement procedure uh, 
concludes in the takedown strikes to the head repeatedly. You're always talking about bringing somebody down or avoiding them. Sure, if you're under threat yourself of great bodily harm, you might strike back. But there's no evidence there. No one has said that Kelly had a weapon or that Kelly struck his officers in the face repeatedly or that even if he did, it's six against one. Please. The actions of the officers were excessive and unreasonable. At what point during the incident? Well, I think the officers' conduct was excessive, brutal, and unreasonable. The moment they had Kelly down, they had to stop. He was Kelly wanted to run. They should have let him run. He was not a threat to anyone. There's not a single victim that's come forward to say, that night Kelly was a threat to me, and that's why these officers were there to protect us. Where is the victim? Where are the victims? There are none. Except for Kelly. Let me get in. What did the federal record say in your words? What did the federal record say in your words? They confirmed what we thought all along. And again, we didn't analyze these professional doctors did. Uh, so we're listening to them and their interpretations. Uh, they tell me clearly that Kelly was murdered. All right, thank you all very much. I know we can go on. No, but what, we, uh, just one last question. If the VA doesn't respond What's the, next step? the question is, if the DA doesn't respond, what's the next stop? Well, what the step? We're not going to stop. So the, the DA will eventually have to respond. And if they don't do the right thing, we're going to ask the Attorney General's office to do the right thing to step forward. If they don't respond, we're asking the, the federal prosecutor to do the right thing. And so someone's got to step up here and, uh, and prosecute these rogue officers. We can't let them get away with murder. Just can't. Thank you. Thank you. He was brain dead by the time he got to St. Jude's because he had 20 minutes of assistance where his heart had no electrical conduction. That way until the 10th when they decided to Oh, by the 10th, yeah, yeah. He was dead on the 5th. What communication have you heard from the Really none. Really none. They haven't called us. They, uh, they are working in their own world, I guess. Uh, we see nothing from them, and so I'm just afraid they're in the delay, delay, delay mode. Thank you very much. Uh, that one, I think he was. Can I ask you Nora? Nora? I'm just the assistant. <laughs> Same as uh, Gara. Oh, okay. And legal assistant is full time? Uh, yeah. I go to UCSB. Right? Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know him personally, but yeah. I met a sound boss doing a story the other day, walked up to my car window. I do a, a direct drive. Uh, so if you're ready for that, it is a bit. You know, alarming. So you ready? All right, watch this. That's what it does when you do it. Can you uh, turn it this way? Uh, and that has yeah, capacity right of 50,000 volts. Uh, and the amperage in it is powerful enough to basically paralyze a human being. And for five seconds, that person would be completely immobile, just frozen. And I'll do that one more time just so you get that. And these things have recorders on them. This is the cartridge that it comes with, and the cartridge has these two little harpoon-like barbs, and they go anywhere from 20 to 35 feet long. And these things, uh, as long as they're attached to the pistol, the operator or the officer can keep pulling the trigger on repeated occasions, sending five seconds of burst of electricity through the suspect's body. So. Uh, this would be a, a direct contact. And when you touch this, you see that. So if one were to touch those three points for five seconds, you're in serious trouble. And this time, not just once, but... Witnesses tell us that Kelly was tased more than six times. Now, we know on his body, the medical personnel have noted that he had taser wounds in the back, in the flank, and in the front of his left chest. Of course, of course. I mean, they used the taser for a purpose that was not intended. They're not 
made to be used as a bludgeoning weapon, but they did. Was it just one officer with a taser? Uh, we we're told it was one officer that used the tasers, but as a weapon. But as far as tasing him, uh, we believe it was two separate guns because we have two separate cartridges, uh, one to the back and one to the front. So there were three officers with tasers, one beating him and two shooting. Well, it could be the same one that shot, also okay. used his gun as a as a as a blunt force trauma. Initially, uh, this, this mentally ill man may have posed a threat to the officers or not? Well, the allegation is that uh, Kelly Thomas, who was mentally handicapped, uh, was supposedly either breaking into cars or had a backpack that didn't belong to him, and yet none of those witnesses that supposedly dropped that call or made the call to the police have come forward. So we'd love to see one of those people tell us why they called the police, because no one has come forward to tell us. So uh, Kelly Thomas was not a harm uh, or a threat to anyone. Was there any evidence, though, that he, was there any evidence that he was breaking into cars? Or As I indicated, there's uh, no evidence. No witness has come forward to say, I saw Kelly Thomas breaking into a car. We just have the police saying we were called out because we were told Kelly Thomas was breaking into a car or somebody was breaking into a car. It was just a handicapped homeless man. And right now the DA is not returning your calls or what is the situation? Well, it's not like uh, uh, there's a problem with communication. Uh, my office number is uh, apparent and uh, the DA is doing his own investigation, I imagine. We just want him to complete it already and tell us what he's going to do. Because these other agencies, the Attorney General and the FBI, are sort of waiting for the DA to make his decision. So make your decision and let's move on, is my message to the DA in a very kind way. Can I get your name? <coughs> Garo Marty Rossi. You say Rossi rather than Rossian? If you want the Armenian pronunciation, <laughs> Rossian. But uh, Marty Rossi is the Anglo. Pronunciation is Marty Ross Ian. Marty, can you say that? Garo. Sorry. <laughs> can you set that you put it down. Can you put it down like that? Can you set it off? I, I oh, set you, it off. I think you fired it. You want me to fire it again? Please. All right. All right, so what we have is a Taser X26. This is a police issue. This uh, is identical to the ones that the officers were using on the night uh, on Kelly Thomas. And this is these two contact points, if they're against somebody's body and, and then you turn this on, if the light goes on, the radio, the, uh, you see the infrared, and then I'm going to now pull the trigger. That's it. That's a five-second burst of a tremendous amount of electricity going through a unit. And one should be enough. Oh, that's five seconds where the person is totally immobilized, paralyzed. So in five seconds, he's down on the ground. He shouldn't have any trouble getting his hands behind his back, cuffing him. They didn't bother cuffing him until after they beat the heck out of him. Basically beat him to death. Well, let's just say this says something else. It says something else, A-S-S-O-R-T, A-S-S-U-L-T, it doesn't matter. If it's assortment due to assortment of reasons, who cares? It's head trauma, brain death. How do you get that? <coughs> Except for the, in the hands of the police. All right. Okay, let me shoot a stand up. Oops, excuse me.